Well, bridges are a key part of our transportation system, and just like roads, ongoing maintenance is required as these mega structures age over time. In the interest of your safety, investigative reporter Cal Harvey did some research about a few of Bakersfield's most traveled bridges. Well, guys, personally, I cross five bridges between my home and this studio, something I'm sure lots of others do on their daily commute as well. So we pulled engineering reports about several of our big bridges to learn just how safe we all are. What we found may surprise you. Living in Bakersfield, you probably don't feel you have to hold your breath before crossing a large bridge. You can generally trust what you're driving on. But America's bridges hardly have a perfect record. Recent bridge failures in Washington State and Minneapolis are evidence of that. So we asked Caltrans for documents full of information about the condition of several of Bakersfield's biggest bridges. We found that one of the worst rated bridges in Kern County is one that is heavily traveled. If something isn't done to fix that, we're going to have a problem. This is one of the bridges that we wanted to ask Caltrans about. I'm standing in the middle of the very dry Kern River just below the Golden State Highway Bridge. Lots and lots of people, thousands every day, travel this bridge as part of their commute. Well, basically, this is an old bridge. Eduardo Reyes is a structure representative for Caltrans, making him an expert on this bridge. It's not good. Built in 1933 and later expanded in the 50s, the foundation of the bridge actually sits on wood. It really bothers me because that's the foundation that's holding up this bridge. When these big buses go over, it, you, can, you can feel the whole thing shaken side to side. That was the standard back then as the uh, foundations were uh, built on uh, timber piles. This, Reyes said, is something that has changed over the last several decades. No more wood. When a bridge is inspected, something that Caltrans does every two years, it receives a series of ratings. Moving down this bridge's report card, we saw several low scores that concerned us, but none more so than the sufficiency rating, a composite score that includes numerous elements of the bridge inspection. It received a 33.6 out of 100. Well, if it's 33 out of 100, that's one third. So maybe I'll cut down to one third of my travels. So we asked Reyes what Caltrans inspectors saw that is so wrong and what needs to be done to keep us all safe. The bridge deck needs to be rehabilitated. We need a new uh, overlay. Uh, we need uh, paint work. And we also need to uh, control uh, undermining of the foundation. From the top down, that means repaving the road using newer technology and repainting everything. On steel bridges, paint is not only for aesthetics. Uh, it protects the steel from corrosion, primarily. And what was that about the foundation? Well, this is one of the reasons for the bridge's low sufficiency rating. This is the foundation of the bridge. And as you can see, I can crawl completely beneath the foundation and emerge on the other side. These are the wood pilings that it's sitting on. These, according to Caltrans, should not be showing. When you see voids or gaps underneath that, uh, that's not a good thing. Reyes says the bridge will not fall down on account of the exposed foundation, at least not yet. This does not mean that uh, the bridge is necessarily going to fail immediately. We will not open an unsafe bridge to traffic ever. But repairs are needed, and sooner rather than later. With time, it could turn into uh, an imminent problem. We wanted to know what, if anything, is being done to fix this. Once the engineers deemed the foundation erosion a structural deficiency in 2013, the bridge became eligible to receive federal funding. And after about a year and a half on the waiting list, Caltrans officials say they've secured $5 million to shore up the bridge later this year. The Caltrans officials tell me they plan to put the project out to bid early this summer and start the work by September. Of course, we will keep tabs on their progress and let you know when these important repairs have been made. Reporting in studio, Kyle Harvey, Eyewitness News.